a very warm welcome to you and um, uh, thank you so much for coming uh, this evening to this service just to make sure that I really am leaving. <laughs> it's great to see you all and uh, there's, some, there's, there's a few faces we haven't seen in a while here. So welcome back you lot, it's great to see you. <laughs> no, I wasn't having a go at people who've not been coming for a while, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm genuinely really happy to see you. So it's really lovely to see you. Um, before we begin, let's just be still for a minute and close our eyes. And um, <laughs> it's okay, it's just Scooby's tail. It's fine. And just become aware of God's presence here with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray that um, you'd be delighted and pleased by all that goes on here this evening. And we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we would just know with all of our beings that you are here with us. And that you'd empower us to just to worship you freely. your way amongst us, and be delighted by all that we do here. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Shall we stand, and we're going to worship God together, we're going to be led by Gemma.
music is fantastic. Come on, loosen up, you English people, you. Oh, you're wonderful. And God loves you just as you are, so just ignore me. But uh, what a great God we have. Um, just, uh, do you have a seat for a moment? And um, the, 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 the Bible teaches us that uh, what is obvious, immediately obvious to all of us, isn't it? To anyone, I reckon, that uh, you could ask in the street, if you went out to the street, uh, and uh, the Bible is kind of agrees with common sense. It says that if any of us say we've somehow we've got it all sorted, we're all perfect, there is clearly something wrong with us. And the Bible's way of saying that is if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. <clears throat> I suppose that's where the world stops. But God goes further. Bible says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He forgives us and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we're going to use the words that are going to come up on the screen. If you'd like to respond with the words uh, in bold. Uh, but before that, just a moment, just to think of the things that separate us from receiving the love of God. What kind of things that prevent us? Things we've said, thought, or done which we're ashamed of. Come Holy Spirit, probe our hearts and minds. So Lord Jesus, for the wrong things we've done, we're sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the wrong things we've said, we're sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the wrong things we've thought, we're sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So for forgiving us, Lord Jesus. Thank you. For giving us a fresh start, Lord Jesus. Thank you. For helping us next time the words have gone. Could you uh, bring them back, please? Okay, one second. Oh, I'm getting too excited again. Yes, I'm not. <laughs> For helping us. <laughs> Next time things are hard. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> well, that went well. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, a, a proper yang service if things went smoothly, would it? Never mind. Um, we're going to have a, a reading now. And uh, I believe Jill's going to come and read our reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, excellent, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. 
Baptist. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Joe. Ooh. Ooh. This is weird, isn't it? Um, wow. Eleven years. And what an eleven years. I've got through sixteen church wardens. <laughs> <laughs> Church wardens, uh, six quinquennials, uh, over 250 weddings. We've had over 20,000 people come into our churches here in Bentley, Vincent, and Croydon. Did you hear that? As visitors at weddings. Isn't that amazing? That's an extraordinary thing. It's beautiful. We've had baptisms and confirmations. We've dumped people in that corner of the, uh, of the church there. Uh, it's just been marvellous. Um, at least 150 PCCs uh, meetings, which, to be honest, seem like about 1,500 <laughs> <laughs> meetings. I have spoken about half a million words. I uh, know. And you're still awake? <laughs> Felt like more, I know. Thank you, Sandy. It's lovely to see you return. <laughs> Six administrators. Um, gosh, it's been actually, I have to say, quite intense. It has, it's been pretty intense. Oh, Christmas services. I think I've personally taken over 50 Christmas services in 11 years. That doesn't make sense, does it? Um, so, Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> School assemblies. Over 500 school assemblies I've taken. Over 500 of them. Because, of course, we have our worshipping community. We have a worshipping community of 201. That's our, our three-year average, I think, or our five-year average, I can't remember which. And, um, but, of course, we, we've got two schools worth of children who get to endure me every week. Bless them. And... Um, just been extraordinary. It's been an extraordinary 11 years. It's been such a great, great privilege uh, to be the vicar here. It really, really has. And so many lives transformed. I've had the great privilege of seeing people transformed by the love and power of God in spectacular ways. We've had difficult moments too. It's not always been easy. We've had really poignant moments. Oh, Tony and Viv Libby, uh, I'm sorry to do this to you, but Tony, can you remember when we prayed for Simon that Christmas? And within a few weeks he had a new set of lungs. It was amazing, wasn't it? Doctor, could you announce that I think the service I know. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, Angel's funeral, which took place here. You know, we've been through a lot together. It's been really hard. And yet in the midst of it, people coming to faith in Jesus Christ and being full of hope where there was no hope. Um, oh, he's not here. Sorry, he sent his wife. That's as good as. One person came to hope by meeting someone in the churchyard. Isn't that great? Isn't that cool? It's been pretty intense. But not as intense as the Apostle Paul had it. So let's see what he writes. So the Apostle Paul, uh, uh, unlike me, was beaten for his faith several times. With rods, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, he was imprisoned. And how does he respond to this? What are his final instructions? He's writing to the church in Philippi. Um, about 11 years after he's first met them. You see? Do you like that? A little detail there? Smooth. Because <laughs> nothing else is. Um, and, um, and what does he write? What are his final instructions? We've been going through a, a sermon series. And Jesus' final instructions is recorded by John. 
But Paul here is writing some final instructions to the Philippians because he's, he's coming to the end. He knows his time uh, is short here on earth and he knows he, he'll probably never see the Philippians again. And so he writes to them, be really overwhelmed and be slightly grumpy. Be very English. <laughs> no, he doesn't write that at all. He writes, rejoice. Rejoice, why? Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in Jesus Christ, in who he is and what he's done for you. And just to make a point, you can tell Paul isn't English. He says, I will say it again. Rejoice. Next verse is interesting. Let your gentleness be evident to all. What is the sign that you have hope in your life? What's kind of the trait that you're going to uh, uh, show off to people around you, in your family, amongst your friends, amongst your colleagues, when you go down to the local shop? Here it is. Let your gentleness, gentleness be evident to all. Why? Because the Lord is near. Paul writes, the Lord is near. If you just, just stretch out, there he is. He's near. He's near to us here today, this evening. He's here by his Spirit. And so don't be surprised if this evening there's something resonating. Paul will be in your guts. I think that's where our, our, our heart and our soul are situated, actually. They're not, they're not up here. I think they're in our guts. But don't be surprised. The Lord is near. So let your gentleness be evident to all. And one of the great commandments of scripture which will bamboozle every mum on the planet and the dads too if we're honest which we're less likely to be are you ready for this do not be anxious about anything how many people are still with me <laughs> do not be anxious about anything. How on earth can I get to a state of life where I'm not anxious about anything? Well, Paul lets us know how. Here we go. That in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, important. You've got to have an attitude of gratitude. in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God. So everything no matter how big no matter how small we bring them to God and we pray. This is the antidote to anxiety and if you don't believe me you have to try it and try it again and again and again and again. The most prayerful people I know See somehow to be the calmest. Which doesn't say much about my prayer life. But it's true. And then, writes Paul, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Faith affects is about the heart, you know, the seat of our emotions where our will is kind of situated and located, but it's also about our minds. And so Paul goes on to say about our minds, this is good, this is the kind of stuff, oh, Jeremy's here, isn't that a consultant? <coughs> <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that you might use as a coach or as a consultant. Positive mental attitude. It's important. He says, finally, Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about 
about such things. This is how we guard our minds in Christ Jesus. It's very practical. I mean, sometimes we have a little... I, I have a go at the book about the Bible. And, oh, that's just crazy. I can't do that. That's totally impressive. This is really practical. This is really easy. Isn't it? Think about what's wonderful. And then you'll recover your peace. God's peace will fill you. And then the bit I would like to be able to repeat, but this is Paul writing a bit, it's not Jan writing. He says, uh, I'd have to sort of change it a bit. I'd say, whatever you've learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, yeah, the good stuff, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. So if the final message from the vicar, who's on his way out, I am leaving, it's okay. Is don't be anxious. Don't worry about a thing. Be full of God's peace. Why? Because the Bible tells you to. That's why. And because who wouldn't want to be filled with peace? If you don't want to be filled with peace, well, we need to give you a big hug. So why would you not want to be filled with peace? Why would you want to hang on to anxiety that so kind of grips your heart and mind and takes over? There is literally no use in living an anxious life. It prevents you from living a fulfilled life which is God's will for all of us here today. So, when I go, we're going to rejoice. Not just because I'm going. <laughs> I saw that smirk, Richard Hill. <laughs> but because of what? Because Christ has made it possible Possible though it sounds, for us to live a life that is full of peace. That's why we rejoice. In spite of, this is written, remember, by this guy who went through the shipwrecks and the beatings and the stonings and the imprisonment. Okay, this is not glib. This is not sort of someone being fanciful and Disney like. Paul is dead serious. And also, this is not written by a man who would lie. It's not really what he's about. So let's have faith and let's trust. Now, there might be one or two of you here for whom this is just almost crazy stuff. And I'm going to suggest that might be because you know about Jesus, but you don't actually know Jesus. There's a difference between the two. You can know about someone, but being in relationship with someone is a very different thing. And the good news is that actually anyone can know Jesus. You just have to pray. So why don't we close our eyes and pray together now. Um, Lord Jesus... to be uh, people who are, are renowned for their gentleness, for their kindness, for their love, <coughs> and for their joy. So Lord Jesus, for those of us who don't really know you, we know about you, but we don't really know you, would you come by your Holy Spirit? Spirit, with your very presence. And for those of us who've been in relationship with you for years, for decades, we just pray for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you would empower us and enable us to live that life 
deep, deep peace. A peace that is there regardless of our circumstance. However tough life might be for us. We pray this for ourselves. And we pray it for our families. And our friends. And our colleagues. And our neighbours. The world so needs peace. Peace that flows from the heart. And overflows. Lord, we're sorry for the times we don't trust, for the times that we don't believe, and for the times that we try and sort life out by ourselves on our own terms without God. Come and fill us now. In Jesus' name. should, if I was well prepared, but I'm not that kind of vicar, you'll be surprised to hear. Um, uh, I should have a, a great big list of thank yous. But the thing is, we've been here for about three hours. Because, of course, the reality is that uh, it's always a team effort, isn't it? Everything that the church does is always about team. And you are all so gifted and beautiful and wonderful. You are. I really don't believe you. But you are. You really are. And um, it's been a great privilege, really kind of being a, sort of almost a little bit of a figurehead of this enormous, amazing team. Um, people who don't know the church very well, I think, maybe look at vicars like, you know, we're kind of leading the charge sort of thing. What they don't see is that everyone else is carrying you. <laughs> And that's how it's been the last 11 years. Um, there have been some amazing people. Do you know there have been people who, who pray for me every week? They just meet in someone's house and they pray. Isn't that amazing? What a commitment. That's extraordinary. I get the odd moan and groan. Yeah, that kind of comes with the job. And uh, some of them I deserve, of course. I have regrets, you do know that, don't you? I've definitely made mistakes. I've definitely made bad calls. And um, I think that my greatest sin really has been the sin of omission. You know, where I've maybe shrunk back when I should have actually intervened or I should have gone and made that visit or made that phone call and I haven't. And um, I'm ashamed of that. And you lot somehow have managed to forgive me all the way through. And I thank you for it. Thank you hugely for it. Um, and I'll repeat, so for those of you who are here this morning, I don't know if you listened to this one, I'm sorry, I'm repeating everything, but hey. Um, the good news is that imperfect though I am, and imperfect though we all are, our hearts are full of hope, are they not? Because we look towards perfection. Perfection is to come. So that's good. We've got lots to look forward to in this life and in the life to come in Jesus Christ. Now, uh, thank yous. Yes, uh, church wardens, PCC people, um, family, my wife and my children have been very patient with me for 11 years. Well, my wife's been patient with me for longer than that. <laughs> supported me, my prayer dog Scooby, who is here tonight, people. He's a holy dog. Um, I want to thank those of you who have spent time with my children, especially. This is a bit cringy for you children, but as a dad, it means so much. And um, that's been delightful, having people be, they're, they're in church. That's amazing. That's no small thing. I'm very grateful to those of you who have ministered to, to us, um, especially uh, to my children. And um, 
keep going. I'm not anxious about the next incumbent. He'll have a Yang Mark II. It's going to be great, or maybe a Yangette. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who knows? They, they might be really well organised. It's six administrators I got through. They, 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 they seem to stick around for very long. I don't know why. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And um, thank you for allowing me to have the privilege of ministering uh, with you. It's been great. And uh, lots of happy memories. That's it. I'm not going to cry. The granite's not going to crack. Let's not embarrass uh, uh, the Astons as they come in. <laughs> Fifteen minutes late. <laughs> Don't look at them, anyone. Don't look at them. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> oh, isn't it great? Uh, some people come here later than I do. Wonderful. <laughs> Bless you. I think um, we need to uh, rejoice and we need to be thankful. And who are we thankful to? The Lord. So, shall we stand together and uh, have a time of worship? Oh, we've got prayers first. Oh, a useless vicar. <laughs> We're going to be led in prayer by Deanne. Thank you, Deanne. And then we'll worship. Psalm 46 hmm? says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. In trouble. Father God, this week we have watched in horror as Russian tanks roll into Ukraine in an act of aggression. God of all nations, we pray for Ukraine and its people. We pray for those who are standing to fight against superior military might. We pray for those who are seeking shelter in metro stations and basements, in an effort to stay safe. We pray for those who are attempting to flee to neighbouring countries. Father, be their refuge. Father, be their strength. Father, be a very present help to them in this time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the church in Ukraine. Give our Christian brothers and sisters in that nation courage in this crisis. Help them, Lord, to bring light and hope into the darkness. Strengthen their faith and envelop them in your love. Holy Spirit, light a fire in the Ukrainian church that blazes in the midst of conflict for your glory. Father, be their refuge and their strength. Be their help in time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the world's leaders and politicians as they grapple with how to deal with this new situation. Grant them great wisdom and unity in their response. We pray against the plans and ambitions of evil men. God of peace, we ask that you would raise up peacemakers, equip them and enable them to bring about change. Father God, who makes wars cease to the ends of the earth, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear, Please bring a rapid end to this war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, there are so many other needs and situations that have been eclipsed by the events in Eastern Europe. We pray for the continuing battle against COVID and an end to the pandemic. We pray for those in our communities who are struggling with the rise in the cost of living. We pray for the sick and the bereaved. 
we pray for the lost and the lonely. Let us take a moment to pray for those that God has placed on our hearts. Be their refuge, their strength, their help in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, tonight we lift up to you Jan and Hannah and their family, including Scooby. We thank you for them and for the blessing and the service that they have given us and this benefice over the last 11 years. So pour out your spirit on them and on their new parish, and on the work that you have for them to do there. Enrich them with your power and your purpose. Bless them and keep them, and be gracious unto them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. by saying the Lord's Prayer together. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Right, now we can stand and worship. That's okay, he's keen, that's good. Enthusiasm. Well, we want enthusiasm from our worship leaders. Let's stand and sing. Oh, I'm leading this one. Oh, okay. Okay, try and keep up. It's quite a fast one, but they're brilliant words.
experienced of it, we pray boldly for more. More in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it's great to have a staff team. People you can trust. People you can rely on. Uh, no, I'm sorry, everyone. We, we, uh, the service for a public broadcast announcement for all the people of the Union. Do I have to face that way? We can't hear you. I'm well, speaking very loud. The last time I did this, by the way, the last time I did this was at a benefit we <coughs> and someone filled my trousers with water. Yeah, we've got that video. Where is it? I'm not here. Sit down, please, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next one, is it? It's anointing. Oh, I was enjoying that tune. Uh, <laughs> so, um, we got some people who. Is everybody please take a seat? So, Jan and Hannah, here's uh, two very special people who very sadly can't be with us today due to COVID, mm. but they would like to participate in the service. Dearest Hannah, Jan, Sophie, hey. Toby, and Max, as this chapter of your life draws to your lives draws to a close. I want to say thank you. Thank you for friendship, encouragement, teaching, guidance, discipleship, support through difficult and sad times, for so many shared experiences. Thank you for all the fun and laughter over the last 11 years. It's been a wonderful time. God led you to our communities and we've all benefited from your leadership. Getting to know you and your family has enriched our lives. We will miss you all tremendously. We wish you well and God's richest blessings for the next chapter of your lives. Till we meet again, much love. Dear Jan, Hannah, Sophie, Toby, Max and Scooby, it is with great reluctance that we let you go. I now know why everyone in my class at Theological College, having met Jan, said they were jealous of my having a position under him. How right they all were and I so love learning from you. You have so many assets and abilities that it would be difficult to single out just a few, so I'm going to only mention the ones that have impressed me the most. I've learned a great deal watching your self-deprecating manner. You've always been very quick to say sorry, even when it's not your fault. I love the way you describe yourself as the biggest child in the room. Your sense of humor ever present and you are seldom lost seeing the funny side in any situation, however difficult the going's got. Your sense of humour goes with your joy of life, your positive outlook that's carried us all along, even through the worst times. I've been blessed to see how you develop all people around you and encourage them to grow in their specific niches. You're able to see the best in people and develop it. We wish you everything of the best in your new position and your new community. God bless you. Go God with bless. much love. God bless. God bless. Bye. So Christopher and Kathy were so disappointed not to be able to be here today. So I'm glad that we were able to include them. But they weren't the only ones who couldn't be here today. There you are, Jan, giving Nick a barrister style grilling in front of Bishop David. <laughs> Nick is sadly absent skiing today. He finally got away a day late due to British Airways. And he's finally made it to France. Hey! And Nikki was hoping to be part of the worship band today on her flutes, but she's so full of cold she thought it best to stay away. <laughs> but they're not the only ones who wanted to be involved in this part of the service. Oh. There's more. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and goodbye. Bye! Bye! <laughs> See you soon! G'day, Anne and Hannah. Um, we just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you've done for us in Benedict. Uh, the work you've done is hugely appreciated as your friendship. Um, thank you uh, and hope you have a great time in your new home. Allez, le bleu. Thanks for having you all. Look forward to seeing you when you're all settled.
and Posey looks forward to her next walk with Scooby. Look at Bye. Greg's hey though. Ciao. <laughs> I'm so sorry you're leaving us. I very much remember those lovely long walks we used to take together and we managed to sort out all the world's problems in about 10 minutes with a bit of God's help I think mm -hmm. and maybe a bit from Scooby as well. But anyway, as, as you're on your way I thought I'd write you a little song you could sing to us from Headley when you get there. So here goes. I left my heart in Ben Ben Fro, <laughs> high on a hill it calls to me, and all those lovely people there, and some very silly ones too, but time moves on, and I must renew. So it's a fond farewell and a sad adieu. <laughs> Bye Anne. <laughs> Happy end <laughs> talk. However, I would like to thank Jan for being all these things to us for the past 11 years and hope that his new parishioners appreciate how lucky they are. Such a wonderful teacher, he certainly encouraged me by his sound doctrine and we will miss him. Hello Jan, it's Hi, uh, Jan. Kathy and Mark together. Uh, we just want to wish you well in the next step of your journey and thank you very much indeed for all that you've done whilst you've been here in Binstead and also for your sense of humour. We will forever be grateful for the manner in which you married John and Liz and inspired other young couples. As for your dress sense, well, there is room for improvement and maybe you should buy yourself an England rugby shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love, Jan. We hope it all goes well. We know it will. And, uh, well, we hope to see you. You're not going to be too far away. So, uh, anyway, hope it all goes well. God bless you and all the family. And we'll miss you. Lots of luck. Yeah. Cheers now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Jan, I hope you have a lovely time in your next post in Headley. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll be seeing you again soon. Hi, Yanny Wanny. It's Sammy Wanny and Gemma Wemmy here. <laughs> if it wasn't for you five years ago saying, does anyone want a job? And me going, yes. <laughs> we would never, ever have even considered moving to Hampshire. So thank you. And thank you for working with me, the added complication to that as well. <laughs> uh, for all the time you've invested in us over the past two and a half years for your mentoring, for your monthly meets, uh, and all the wonderful silly jokes and Star Wars references we've been able to share together. <laughs> um, and I could not let this video go without putting in um, a highlight reel of our assemblies. So, here we go. Come on, Come on, Come on, Gemma! Gemma Wemmer, I can't see you. Where are you, Gemma Wemmer? I'm looking for you, but I can't find you. Gemma Wemmer! Gemma Wemmer! Gemma Wemmer! Where are you? Gemma Wemmer, Wemmer Woo! Jemmy Wemmy Wemmy Wemmer 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 Where are you? Hi. Hi. What are you doing? Hi, Anne. Oh, hi, Gemma Wemmer. Hi, Gemma Wemmer. What, what are you doing? What am I doing? Like to see. What are you what? wearing? You can even go water skiing like this. Hey! 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 Oh, hi, Gemma. What, what are you up hi. to? It's a transform bobulator. One, two, three.
So, okay, you're ready for this? Abraham, many sons had Father Abraham, and I mind of his, and so would you. So let's all praise that. So we're in the left, and the right, and the left, and the right, and then none of the head, and then ooh, and then ah. Thank you so much for all you have done for our family and our village. You have made such an impact on us and we will miss you greatly. A bientôt. Jan, you've been such a source of inspiration and joy for us. You're definitely going to leave a Jan-shaped hole in our hearts. Um, Favourite memory has to be when you told the children that the little bubbles in bread are caused by the yeast farting uh, in the Harvest Junior Assembly. That was very special. Thank you for all the assemblies that you did with Gemma because they were really funny. My favourite was when you were jumping around the garden with Max in lockdown. Um, and one more thing, Camembert team. Yay. Hi, family. We just wanted to send you a quick uh, message before you move on and say a massive thank you. You've meant a lot to us as a family. From when you first came over to meet us to talk about Finley's baptism when he was a baby, to confirming Mike last weekend. Um, best of luck, we're going to miss you a lot and thanks for everything you've done. Bye, Bye Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Jan. Thank you so much for being the best vicar ever. We've all been so blessed. Thank you for all the ministries that you've developed and souls that you have nurtured here in Ben Bin Fro. Ever since I persuaded you as a curate in Four Marks, possibly 15 years ago now, to come and speak at our informal Sunday evening service. It seemed that that was the start of God's plan for all of us. We are so sad to have to let you go and a teeny bit jealous of Headley, but excited to see what's next for you all and pray God's work can continue through you. Hi Anne, I have three memories that make me smile. Firstly, when we were short of real, real musicians to lead worship, you introduced I Sing Worship on your iPad. How things have changed now. Secondly, I have a picture in my mind of you riding your electric unicycle whilst fully robed. Thirdly, more recently, when you switched off your lawnmower robot midway through a YouTube stream Sunday service. So sorry we can't be with you at your last service, but love and blessings from all of us to you always. Bye. Bye. Hi, Jan and Hannah. Who'd believe it? After a decade in the benefits, it's time for you to move on. And we wanted to wish you the very best and thank you for all you've done in our benefits. We're going to miss your energy. Your engaging sermons. Your singing. Your optimism. Your passion. And your organisation skills. <laughs> so, wishing you health and happiness. And that's from one of your first church wardens. And from all the Lanyans. Best wishes. Bye. Memories of Jan. I ask myself, are Headley ready for a unicycling, air guitar playing, pink wig wearing, ice bucket challenged vicar? Thanks for the past 11 years. You'll be a tough act to follow. In that well-known phrase, if you are of a certain generation like me, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from him. Jan, your 11 years with us have been just amazing and the guidance and encouragement you've given us will be uh, a rich and lasting legacy. We're gonna miss you terribly, of course, as we will Hannah and Sophie and Toby and Max, but we feel deeply blessed to have such a rich store of wonderful and happy memories, including all the fun that we shared together. So bless you and thank you from the bottom of our hearts.
Sarah, and um, we just wanted to say, having been your church wardens for, I think, all but one of your 11 years in the benefits, um, your church wardens at Friar, that is, um, what a huge joy and privilege it has been for both of us. Um, speaking personally, um, I fear that once Sarah stepped down and was no longer there to keep us focused, uh, team Froyle, I think, um, rather started to lack an organisational sharpness that was probably <laughs> um, But all in all, it's been great fun and it's been very rewarding. So um, our thoughts and prayers are with you and Hannah and all the family as you head off down the road. Um, please do stay in touch and are going to miss you hugely and thank you for all you have done over the years. <laughs>
Please do or don't. Please do open it. Please do open it. It's an Apple Watch. There you go. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> That's the, can, I, can I have that back, please? That, that was mine. Sorry. Sorry, nice. Take it. Posh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, seriously, yeah. Thank we you. We thought that you might want an Apple Watch because he could then come into church to do funerals and press play on his watch to start the music. <laughs> so that's his reason. But we, we didn't want to risk the wrath of Hannah if we got you one. So we thought it best to let you decide between you whether you should have one. So we've got your collection and many people in the benefits have contributed and we have £2,380. What? Oh no. <laughs> Jesus is my superhero. So Jan is my superhero. <laughs> so let's bring this back to God. And yes. we can't go let you go without publicly thanking you and expressing our heartfelt and deepest thanks to you for all you've done for us, us here in Benjamin Road. You will say that it's not been without its challenges. You will keep telling us how imperfect you are, but you have been such an inspirational leader for us, one who has had a huge impact on so many lives, that we will miss you. We will miss you all. So let's have a huge and loving cheer for Jan and the whole Jabroy family. Aww. So, if we could get the whole family out, if we could get all out to the centre and stand yes. up, clean you please, Tobes. Come on, Tobes. <laughs> And then Sam is going to lead us in praying for you all as you depart from here, us here in Ben Road. Thank and we want to have it. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, maybe if you'd like to stretch out a hand as we quickly pray for this amazing family. So Lord, thank you so much for all that Jan has done over the past 11 years. Thank you for the privilege that's been working under him. And I thank you personally, Jan, for all that you've done for me and for Gemma. And I just echo the prayers of everything that's already been said earlier. Thank you so much for this amazing man and this amazing family. And as has already been said, Ian doesn't like it being about him. And actually he's right, it isn't about him, it's about you. Mm. And so as Ian and the family move on to Headley, we say goodbye, but we also commission and send. Lord, would you be with them as they go to Headley? Would you enable us to support them as they go to Headley? And all the chaos of moving and the inevitable ups and downs that will happen over the next few years. So Lord, we send and commission this wonderful person and this wonderful family to heaven. Holy Spirit, would you come and be among them? Would you be with them, going before them, walking beside them? Would you be their rock and their redeemer as they go on? Thank you for this amazing family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So we do want to bring it back to God, so we're just going to have a, one, more worship, one or two more worship songs. I'll leave it up to Jim and Sam to decide. <laughs>